You know how it is. Post something internet, it's there forever. We got that part. Kinda, you know, your own fault if you threw that sucker up. But, but, consider this. What about that info that lives just a touch behind it? Now that is an interesting question. JBS says its backup servers were not affected and it sees no evidence that customer, supplier, or employee data has been compromised. It comes less than a month after hackers forced the Colonial Pipeline to shut down for more than a week on the East Coast. Gas pumps empty. Colonial paid a $4.4 million ransom to suspected Russian hackers to regain control of its computers. Like the new studio? Well, today we are going to be talking about open source intelligence gathering based on breach compilation data. But what's really particularly interesting about this is the context. You see, one of the things that you will most commonly see today on the news, well, to be fair on the news, you're always gonna see things about cyber attacks these days, it's going crazy. But one of the things you'll most commonly see related to them is they'll say, there was no evidence that any customer data was stolen or compromised. Ooh. That means you can rest easy, right? Rest on your laurels. Yet yeah, consider this. If I'm an organization that's been compromised and ransomware, it means that between the compromise and the ransomware, there was no evidence, as far as I'm aware, that we were compromised, otherwise we'd have done something about it, right? Obviously, of course. So, so, if I didn't even know you were there, how could I possibly have any evidence of what you were doing? The sheer idea that I would, as that compromised organization, is insane. And so while one of the most common things that we'll hear on the news is there's no evidence that data was stolen, what we're really actually dealing with is there's no evidence of anything whatsoever. And I say that as someone who's been involved with a lot of incident responses. And so, if the attacker has gotten into an organization, might that organization have information about you? And might we be exposed as a result? You see, this brings into context a concept that I absolutely despise because we misuse it terribly in just the world in general. It's the deep web, right? You say, oh yeah, the deep web. Attackers are in there, oh yeah. Doing sports together is awesome. Totally, I'm thirsty. Oh yeah. Whoa! That's a complete misnomer. All that it is when we talk deep web is these are systems that are not directly connected to the internet. That might be your cell phone. That might be your laptop behind your wireless router at home. That might be any of the computers at the office where you go to work behind the corporate fire. All of these are the deep web. So the deep web, honestly, is the thing we most commonly use. A system that we can use to connect to the internet, but are not directly connected on and available on the internet. These systems, of course, have really sensitive information on them, from family photos to corporate sensitive data. And if the attacker steal this information and they throw it on the internet, suddenly we may be directly exposed. That's a problem. That's dangerous. But just how dangerous is it? When this data is uploaded to the internet, we refer to it as breach data. And one of the most common styles of breach data that you may see is something like a username and a password. When your organization gets breached, they steal your username, they take your password, and if an attacker were to reuse this information elsewhere to see if you reuse your password and log in as you, we call this attack credential stuffing. Very, very powerful and exceedingly dangerous. Also a very common technique. But breach data can be so very much more. For example, I was doing an instant response for a hospital last year. Yeah, it's a hospital. And it turns out that the hospital was undergoing a compromise. It was an insider threat. So an interesting style of compromise. And we were able to identify directly that this was what was going on. We had login events during the, in the specific window on the specific system 
where nefarious activity was occurring. We had the user account, we had all kinds of information, but nothing was directly attributable to an individual. We did, however, end up with an email address. So as one does, we took the email address and we threw it into Google. We said, hey Google, whose email address is this? Shucks. No results found. It turns out that the attacker recognized that using an email address like this might be attributable to them, and so they tried to make this an email address that wasn't associated with their personal name as much as possible. All right, all right, fair enough. So what might we do in this context? Well, if we go to a website called Have I Been Pwned, what Have I Been Pwned will do is you type in an email address, and it tells you what breaches Yahoo got hacked, LinkedIn got hacked, Facebook, Target, Equifax, you name Yahoo again, did I mention Yahoo? All these companies getting compromised, right? And so if you've been in one of those breaches, Have I Been Pwned won't give you the breach data because information security practitioners all around, we recognize this information is super sensitive, really sensitive. Could be your home address, phone number, email address, social security, uh, credit card information, your backup email address, all kinds of stuff. Passwords? Oh yeah, absolutely. And so we try to get this information taken down if it's ever being hosted up on a site or whatnot. And so of course, have I been pwned? It doesn't provide you that information directly, but it does give you a listing of all of the different breaches where this email address itself is a suspect. And so if we're trying to do research based off of this information, we now have a list, a shopping list, if you will, of breach data to go after. And so we Google for it, breach data for, insert breach here, LinkedIn, whatever it might be. And on the first page of Google, well, turns out InfoSec practitioners probably did a decent job, not gonna find it. Okay, so far so good. Second page, yeah, go fish maybe. Third page of Google, as we start to delve into the weeds and start to explore amongst the conspiracy theories that live on Google page three and beyond. Well, we're gonna find ourselves some breach compilation data, absolutely. There are other places you can go for this kind of information. You might go to the Internet Archive, hit or miss results on that one. It's a bit too much information. Generally speaking, you're not gonna get a lot of uh, value there. However, you can also go to things like torrent uh, sites. Torrent sites are actually quite outstanding for the acquisition of breach compilation data. Um, it is what it is. But at the end of the day, if the attacker has put this information on the internet, the internet is not quite immutable, but it's pretty darn close once it's on the web. It's there to stay. And so in the case of our incident response story, that's exactly what we did. We discovered breach compilation data, and we looked through that information, and we're able to identify a lot of data about the individual specifically. For example, we're able to find a home address associated with that email address that was within a few blocks of the hospital that we were working for. So we went to the hospital and said, hey look, do you have an employee who lives here? And they said, oh yeah, that's Lindsay. I'm using a fake name here for obvious reasons. And of course we did the rest of the standard open source intelligence gathering stuff, Googling, social media, public record lookups, those kinds of things. And we said, hey look, we got a picture of Lindsay. Does she look like this? And they said, oh yeah, that's Lindsay. And it turns out we had discovered our insider threat at this point. You see, there is so very much more to open source intelligence gathering than what just meets the direct eye. We need to consider these things and understand the implications thereof. In any case, I hope that this has been kind of an interesting topic for us to discuss together. I hope you learned something new from it. And if you did, leave us a comment to let us know to make more of this type of content and give us a like and a subscribe if you feel so inclined. Until next time, and as always, happy hacking.